I am, that is to say, I was a great man, but I am neither the author of Junius nor the man in the mask. For my name is Thomas Smith, and I was born somewhere in the city of Fumfudge. The first action of my life was the taking hold of my nose with both hands. My mother saw this and called me a genius. My father wept for joy and bought me a treatise on nosology. Before I was breached, I had not only mastered the treatise, but had collected into a commonplace book all that is said on the subject by Pliny, Aristotle, Alexander Ross, Minutius Felix, Hermanus Pictorius, Del Rio, Villaret, Bartholinus, and Sir Thomas Brown. I now began to feel my way in the science and soon came to understand that provided a man had a nose sufficiently big, he might, by merely following it, arrive at a lionship. But my attention was not confined to theories alone. Every morning I took a dram or two and gave my proboscis a couple of pulls. When I came of age, my father sent for me to his study. My son, said he, what is the chief end of your existence? Father, I said, it is the study of nosology. And what, Thomas is, he continued, is nosology, sir? I replied, it is the science of noses. And can you tell me, he asked, what is the meaning of a nose? A nose, my father, said I, has been variously defined by about a thousand different authors. It is now noon or thereabouts. We shall therefore have time enough to get through with them all by midnight. To commence. The nose, according to Bartholinus, is that protuberance, that bump, that excrescence, that... That will do, Thomas, said my father. I am positively thunderstruck at the extent of your information. I am upon my soul. Come here and he took me by the arm. Your education may be considered as finished, and it is high time you should scuffle for yourself. So, 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 here he kicked me downstairs and out of the door. So get out of my house, and God bless you. As I felt within me the divine afflatus, I considered this accident rather fortunate than otherwise, and determined to follow my nose. So I gave it a pull or two and wrote a pamphlet on nosology. All fum fudge was in an uproar. Wonderful genius, said the quarterly. Superb physiologist, said the New Monthly. Fine writer, said the Edinburgh. Great man, said Blackwood. Who can he be, said Mrs. Basbleu. What can he be, said Big Miss Basbleu. Where can he be, said Little Miss Basbleu. But I paid them no manner of attention and walked into the shop of an artist. The Duchess of Bless My Soul was sitting for her portrait. The Marchioness of So-and-So was holding the Duchess's poodle. The Earl of This and That was flirting with her salts, and His Royal Highness of Touch Me Not was standing behind her chair. I merely walked towards the artist and held up my proboscis. Oh, beautiful, sighed the Duchess of Bless My Soul. Oh, pretty, lisped the Marchioness of So-and-So. Horrible, groaned the Earl of This and That. Abominable, growled His Highness of Touch Me Not. What will you take for it, said the artist. A thousand pounds, said I, sitting down. A thousand pounds? He inquired, turning the nose to the light. Precisely, said I. Beautiful, said he, looking at the nose. A thousand pounds, said I, twisting it to one side. Admirable, said he. A thousand pounds, said I. You shall have them, said he. What a piece of virtue. So he paid me the money and made a sketch of my nose. I took rooms in German Street, sent His Majesty the 99th edition of the Nosology with a portrait of the author, and His Royal Highness of Touch Me Not invited me to dinner. We were all lions and researches. There was a Grand Turk from Stamboul. He said that the angels were horses, cocks, and bulls. That somebody in the sixth heaven had 70,000 heads and 70,000 tongues, and that the earth was held up by a sky-blue cow with 400 horns. There was Sir Positive Paradox. He said that all fools were philosophers and all philosophers were fools. There was a writer on ethics. He talked of fire, unity, and atoms, bipart and pre-existent soul, affinity and discord, primitive intelligence and homo homeria. There was Theologos theology. He talked of Eusebius and Arianus, heresy and the Council of Nice, consubstantialism, homusios and homoioesios. There was fricassee from the Rocher de Cancale, he mentioned Latour, Marc Brunin, and Maraschino, Muriton of Red Tongue, and Cauliflowers with Velouté Sauce, Ville à la Saint Menehou, Marinade à la Saint Florentine, and Orange Jellies on Mosaic. There was Signor Tintontintino from Florence. He spoke of Cimabue, 
Arpino, Carpaccio, and Agostino, the gloom of Caravaggio, the amenity of Albano, the golden glories of Titian, the frows of Rubens, and the waggeries of Jan Steen. There was the great geologist Feldspar. He talked of hornblende mica slate, quartz, schist, shorl, and pudding stone. There was the president of the Fum Fudge University. He said that the moon was called Bendis in Thrace, Bubastis in Egypt, Diane in Rome, and Artemis in Greece. There was Delphinus Polyglot. He told us what had become of the 83 lost tragedies of Aeschylus, of the 54 orations of Isaias, of the 391 speeches of Lysias, of the 180 treatises of Theophrastus, of the 8th book of the conic sections of Apollonius, of Pindar's hymns and dithyrambics, and the five and forty tragedies of Homer Jr. There was a modern Platonist. He quoted Porphyry, Iamblichus, Plotinus, Proclus, Hierocles, Mamamus Tyrius, and Syrianus. There was a human perfectibility man. He quoted Turgot, Price, Priestley, Condorcet, De Stael, and the ambitious student in rather ill health. There was myself. I talked of Pictorius, Del Rio, Alexander Ross, Minutius Felix, Bartholinus, Sir Thos, Brown, and the science of noses. Marvelous, clever man said his highness. Superb, said the guests. And the next morning her grace of bless my soul paid me a visit. Will you go to Almax, pretty creature, she said. Certainly, said I. Nose and all, she asked. Positively, I replied. Here then is a card, she said. Shall I say you will be there? Dear Duchess, with all my heart. Shaw, no, but with all your nose? Every bit of it, my life, and said I. So I gave it a pull or two and found myself at Almax. The rooms were crowded to suffocation. He is coming, said somebody on the staircase. He is coming, said somebody farther up. He is coming, said somebody farther still. He is come, said the Duchess. He is come, the little love. And she caught me by both hands and looked me in the nose. Ah, Jolie, said Mademoiselle Passul. Dios guarda, said Don Stiletto. Diavolo said Count Capricornuto. Tusen Tufel, said Baron Bludenuff. Tweedledee, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, said the orchestra. Ah, Jolie, Dios guarda, Diavolo, and Tusen Tufel, repeated Mademoiselle Passul, Don Stiletto, Count Capricornuto, and Baron Bludenuff. It was too bad. It was not to be born. I grew angry. Sir, said I to the Baron, you are a baboon. Sir, replied he after a pause, Donner and Blitzen. This was sufficient. The next morning I shot off his nose at six o'clock and then called upon my friends. Beat, said the first. Fool, said the second. Ninny, said the third. Dolt, said the fourth. Noodle, said the fifth. Ass, said the sixth. Be off, said the seventh. At all this I felt mortified and called upon my father. Father, I said, what is the chief end of my existence? My son, he replied. It is still the study of nosology. But in hitting the baron's nose, you have overshot your mark. You have a fine nose, it is true, but then Bludenuff has none. You are d-d, d and he has become the lion of the day. In Fum Fudge, great is a lion with a proboscis, but greater by far is a lion with no proboscis at all.